Okay, so in this video here, we're going to be talking about how to find the equation of a circle if we're given three points that are on that circle. Now, the first thing that you have to understand is the relationship that you have between these three points. And in particular, it has to do with the perpendicular bisector. So for example, you can see that they gave us three points up here. But what I want you to look at is the following. And these could be any three points. It doesn't matter. So if you have any three points on a circle, you will have this property dealing with the perpendicular bisectors. And remember, the perpendicular bisectors will essentially divide a line segment evenly. So it will be passing through the midpoint of that line segment. So for example, if you have point A here, and then point B here, and point uh, C here, if we were to draw perpendicular bisectors going through these line segments, we would have something like this here. So I'd have a line segment here, Okay, I'd have one here, all right, and I'd have another one right here. And so the property is, whenever you draw in these perpendicular bisectors, the point of intersection between them will always be the center of the circle. So for example, this point right here will end up being the center of my circle, and I can use that to my advantage. Now, a couple of things you have to know here, you have to know the equation of a circle, and that's gonna be the following, where you have x, minus h squared plus y minus k squared all equal to radius squared. Okay, that's an equation of a circle. You're also going to have to know point slope form here, which is y minus y1 equal to your slope and then x minus x1. Um, you're going to have to know that because you're going to have to get the equation of these perpendicular bisectors here. And we'll talk about how to do that. Okay, so here we go, we have a blank slate. And what we're gonna do here, we're gonna go ahead and label our points. I'll call this point A, B, and C. And so what you wanna do is the following. We're gonna make a list here. We're gonna wanna get the midpoint. So we have to get the midpoint between these line segments. Now, you only have to get two line segments here, okay? You don't have to pick all three. So I'm gonna get the midpoint between two line segments, all right? So let me go ahead and put that right here, midpoint. And then from there, we want to get the perpendicular bisector, which will end up being an equation of a line. And we'll talk about how to do that. So what I'm going to say here, we want to get the perpendicular slope, and that will make a little more sense as we go. Okay. And then from there, we can go ahead and put it all together. So let's go ahead and find the midpoint. Now, pick a line segment that you want to work with. I'm going to pick line segment AB. So I'm going to say here, line segment AB. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the midpoint here. So again, to get the midpoint, you simply add and then divide by two. So we're gonna add up our X values here and then divide by two. So again, this would be like X1, this would be X2. Adding that up and dividing by two, you are gonna get negative 10 here, right? Negative seven plus a negative 13, you end up getting negative 20, divided by two, you get negative 10. So I get negative 10, comma, and then I'm gonna do the Y values. I'm gonna get six plus zero, I get six, divide by two, you end up getting three. So what you're finding right now is the midpoint of this line segment. And we know that this midpoint, the perpendicular bisector is going to be passing through, right? And so from here, we wanna get the perpendicular slope. So I can get the slope of this line segment here, but that's not gonna help me. I want the perpendicular slope, right? I want that slope that's gonna be forming 90 degree angles. And in particular, that will be the slope of my perpendicular bisector. So first I have to get the slope between A and B and then simply taking the negative reciprocal of that value will give me the perpendicular slope. So for example, again, we're gonna do Y2 minus Y1. And again, we're gonna do this in our head, but we're doing Y2 minus Y1 all over X2 minus x1 to get our slope. So again, we're going to assume here that zero will be y2, and then six will be y1. You're gonna do zero minus six, you get negative six, divided by negative 13 minus a negative seven. That ends up being negative 13 plus seven. So that will give you negative six. Okay, so my slope here is gonna be one, but again, we want the perpendicular slope. So my perpendicular slope here will end up being negative one. Right, we take the negative reciprocal, so negative one. All right, okay, we're gonna do the same thing now. This time we're gonna do line segment BC. So doing line segment BC, we get the following. Again, we wanna get the midpoint here. So getting the midpoint, again, we're gonna add and divide by two. 
So I have to do negative 13 plus five, that will give me negative eight, and then negative eight divided by two, I end up getting negative four. So I get negative four here, comma, and doing the y value, I get negative six plus zero, that will give me negative six, divided by two, I get negative three. So I get negative three. There's the midpoint of that line segment. And again, the perpendicular bisector will be passing through that point. And then to get the perpendicular slope here, we're gonna do the same thing that we did above here. First, we're gonna get the slope of the line segment and then we'll take the negative reciprocal. So getting the slope of the line segment here, we're gonna do y2 minus y1. That's gonna be negative six minus zero. You get negative six divided by x2 minus x1, that will give you five minus a negative 13, that will give you positive 18. So reducing that down, we get negative one third, but again, we want the perpendicular slope. So taking the negative reciprocal here, which again is flipping it and making it negative, we get um, perpendicular slope equal to positive three, right? So positive three. So we pretty much have everything we need now to essentially get the center of the circle. So again, the equation of a circle is gonna be the following. You will have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equal to radius squared. And so what we're gonna be doing right now is getting h and k, okay? I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and scroll down, all right? Now, this is where point slope form is gonna come into play. So what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna get the equation of these perpendicular bisectors, and we know that the intersection point will be the center. So if we ever wanna find the intersection point of two equations, we solve it by using a system of equations. So plugging it into point slope form, you get the following. You get y minus y1 equal to your slope, and then x minus x1. So what's gonna end up happening x1 and y1, that's gonna be the midpoint that you found here, okay? And then your slope is gonna end up being the perpendicular slope that we found. We're gonna end up solving for y and x, and the result there will end up being the center, because again, this represents the equation of the perpendicular bisector when we plug it in, and we'll have two of them. So when we solve for x and y, we get that intersection point, which again, will end up being the center, of our circle, and once you have that, it's very easy to get the rest. So let's go ahead and plug it in. We're gonna get our first equation here, and I'm gonna do line segment AB here. Again, we're gonna use the midpoint here for X1 and Y1. So my Y1 here will be positive three, but when I plug it in, it becomes a negative three, equal to my perpendicular slope, negative one, and then we have X, and my X1 will be negative 10 here, but when I plug it in, it becomes a positive 10, Okay, so there it is. There's one equation. Now the other equation will come from line segment BC. So going ahead and plugging that in, we get Y. Now my Y1 here is going to be negative three. When I plug it in, it becomes positive three. So plus three equal to my perpendicular slope here, which will be three. Okay, my X value will just be X. And then my X1 will be negative four, but when I plug it in, it becomes positive four. Okay, why don't we go ahead and scroll down just a little bit. What we wanna do from here is clean it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the right-hand side. That will give me y minus three equal to negative x and then minus 10. Cleaning up this one here, we get y plus three equal to three x and then plus 12, okay? So again, when you solve a two by two system of equations, you're trying to eliminate a variable. It doesn't matter which one you eliminate. I'll go ahead and eliminate y here. So to do that, I'm gonna do subtraction, all right? So for example, we're gonna go ahead and rewrite these as y plus three equal to three x plus 12. And now taking the other equation here, and again, you do wanna subtract, so go ahead and make sure you know what you're doing here. I am subtracting, so I'm gonna go ahead and circle it. That way I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna have y minus three equal to negative x minus 10, and we're actually gonna solve for x here because y will cancel out when we subtract, okay? So let's go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and scroll down just a little bit. So doing y minus y, that will cancel out. That's what I want. Three minus a negative three will end up giving you positive six. So I get positive six here, 
equal to 3x minus a negative x, that will give you positive 4x. And then doing 12 minus a negative 10, you get positive 22. So we're gonna put here positive 22, and then we're gonna solve for x. So I have to move over 22. When I do that, I get six minus 22, I get negative 16, equal to four x, meaning x will be negative four, okay? And remember, x is really like our h when we're talking about a circle. That's the x value of our center. So I know that when I plug it in, my h value will be negative 4. Now we have to solve for our y value, which again will end up being k. So you can go ahead and pick any one of these equations. I'll go ahead and pick this one here and solve for y. If I do that, I get y minus 3 equal to, now I already have x, I know what it's going to be, it's going to be negative 4, so when I plug it in, it becomes positive 4, and then minus 10, so I get y minus 3 equal to negative 6, and then I have to add the 3, so I get y is equal to negative 3, and again, that will be like my k, so I have my h and my k, it's going to be negative 4 and negative 3, and so why don't we go ahead and start a blank page? That way we have room. It's very simple. We're pretty much done with the problem, but let's go ahead and start a blank page. Okay, so I just went ahead and recorded down what H and K were, or in other words, X and Y, that is the center of our circle. And again, the equation of a circle will be X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equal to your radius squared. Now at this point here, you have H and K, and you have X and Y. Uh, that can be any one of those three points that they gave you. So remember, the three points that they gave you were negative seven, comma six, they gave you negative 13, comma zero, and they gave you five, comma negative six. So you can pick any one of these three points to plug into X and Y. I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one here because I see a zero and that's easy to work with. And we're gonna solve for the radius and then we'll have it all done. So plugging into X here, we're gonna have negative 13. So I get negative 13. Now my H is a negative four. When I plug it in, it becomes positive four, okay, squared. And then plus my Y, well, that's gonna be zero right here. So I get zero. Then plugging in my K, again, that's a negative three. When I plug it in, positive three, square it, and then equal to radius squared. Now, when you do this part here, you get negative nine. Negative nine squared will give you 81. So 81 plus three squared will give you nine, equal to radius squared, or in other words, 90 is equal to radius squared. Solving for your radius, you're gonna end up getting radius is equal to the square root of 90. And again, we're not gonna use plus or minus here because radius will be a distance. You can't have a negative distance. So we're gonna be using the positive version here. So positive square root of 90. So let's go ahead and do it in a different color. Let's rewrite the entire thing. And when we do that, we get the following. We get X minus H. When I plug in my H, it's a positive four squared plus y minus k. When I plug in my k, it ends up becoming a positive three. Okay, squared equal to my radius squared, which we know is right here. It's gonna be 90, right? So equal to 90, there it is. Here's the equation of the circle that has those three points, okay? And that is it. So again, we solved that one a little bit differently. We used the properties of a perpendicular bisector, and then we were able to bring it down to a two by two system of equations and solve from there. There are many different ways in which you can do this problem. There's not a right or wrong way to do it. But in my opinion, this is one of the easier ways of doing it. So I hope that you found it helpful. I hope that you gained something from the video. If the video did in fact help you, if you could just go ahead and give it a thumbs up, that'd be greatly appreciated. Also, make sure you subscribe. That way you get more math videos in the future. And I'll see you in the next one.